So one of the impediments to using Vim is just not being able to develop a habit of understanding the various different keys that you can use to perform common tasks. For example, W to move between the start of words or B to go backwards, or maybe to delete a word, DW. And so I found there's a nice extension that can help out. It doesn't get in the way when you know what you're doing. If, however, you're struggling, for example, if I want to delete something here, I can use the D key. Wait about a second because I set up a large delay. That way it doesn't come up right away. And so after a second, then if I haven't continued the cord of keys, in this case, I get a panel down at the bottom, and this is the which key extension. And it shows me the options that I have for the next step. So for example, if I wanted to delete the previous word, I could use little b or big B for the previous entire word. So I could do big B here, look up above. I can finish that out then. So the nice thing is you can pause right in the middle of a motion and get some help. So maybe I don't remember how to comment, but I know that I start with G. You could type that in then. Wait a second there. You can see toward the bottom of the list, here's toggle comment. So I can hit C then to toggle a comment. And then I need to add that one more time here. That'll actually perform the toggling of the comment. Or if I undo that, if I wanted to comment out multiple lines, I could start out with five. And then I don't think it'll pull up here because there's too many options. But if I do the G, now you can see I've got the options available. So now I can work through here. Maybe I want to toggle the case. I could use tilde then. And I need to specify how much. Well, I could do the next word with W. And there you go. You can see I have uppercase then for the next word. And so that's just for motions and it's not limited to that. For example, if I want to work with the window, maybe to split a pane here, I could do control W. Maybe I just don't remember what the next key is. Well, there you go. You can see there's an S for split window or V for a vertical split. Maybe that's what I want. So V here, there you go. And the nice thing about this, if you aren't certain what to use, control W, it'll open up and it'll actually span across the entire window. And it's going to pause long enough for you to review the options. Whereas normally, if you try to use a different key combination, you have about a couple of seconds at max, depending on your configuration, to get the rest of the keys, after which time you then have to start over. And so now maybe what I wanted to do was to decrease the width of the window so I could use the less than sign. I could move that. So in all the different aspects of Vim that you might be learning about, if you have which key set up and you put in a large enough delay here, let me close one of these. You can see I set the delay here to 1,000. It doesn't get in the way when you know what you're doing. For example, if I do GCC here, it doesn't pop up and interrupt me if I know what I'm doing. But when I get stuck here, I can just start out the motion and I'll get some help then down below. And even if you know things pretty well, there are going to be a ton of different actions that you're probably not even aware of. This is a great way to contextually find out what exactly you could do that maybe you've never tried before. And so if you want to use this extension, here's the repo out on GitHub. Go grab a copy of this. There's a lot of documentation here. And then to set this up here, I'm using Packer. Just specify the repo and then go ahead and set it up. I've, of course, set the delay to a larger value. I think it's like 200 milliseconds to begin with, which is a good enough delay, but I like that full second. That way it's never getting in the way. Maybe 500 milliseconds would be a better compromise. That way, when you do need it, you're not seemingly waiting forever. All right, so then you have different configuration you can set. I'd encourage you just to look at the repo for the, all the different options that are available. There's options for spelling, text objects, window objects, you name it. There's a ton of different things you can get help with. In fact, let me show you that spelling. I think it is enabled by default here. Let's test that out here. Just come in here and put in, instead of T-R-U-E, I'll do E-U, misspell that. And then if I use Z here, you can see I've got spelling suggestions with equals. There you go. You can see I have different options. Maybe I want to pick number two to fix that. And so, yeah, add this to your configuration. You can always take it out if it's annoying. You could toggle it on and off with some sort of keyboard shortcut. It's definitely worth having if you are new to Vim or you're still learning. It's definitely a good option to have available to help you in a pinch.